can't be pro-worker without being anti-Tory. Those two are completely inseparable because the Tories do the opposite of fighting for workers. Any nurses using food banks is horrendous, uh, but it's so disingenuous and just fundamentally untrue. You know what links all of these groups of people getting pay rises, Ian? They're all in unions. Again, damn right they should be anti-Tory and damn right they should take, you know, coordinated industrial action to force the government's hand. Again, that's what unions are for. So I've covered this before. I think it's worth covering again because it's something that I massively support. I think it's something that needs to be continually talked about, right? We can't just let this leave the news cycle whilst we're talking about the next piece of kind of Westminster soap opera drama that's been going on. Something that is structurally incredibly important is the nurses' strike that's that's happening, uh, that's been balloted on and successfully balloted on, um, which seems which seems to have caused a lot of a stir for a lot of people who with no actual um, with no actual stake in any of this, if any of these things, uh, from talk TV DJs. Now, I I covered um, I covered Julia Hartley Brewer on a segment that I released on YouTube last week, and turns out Ian Collins has got into the game, uh, debating people who uh, are part of the nurses strike. This has been titled Ian Collins dispatches union boss over nurses strike, which I'm assuming will contain very similar rhetoric, but. I don't know, maybe they have some new arguments since the Julia Hartley Brewer segment. So I'm going to watch it. We're going to respond. We're going to tear apart this uh, this uh, lapdog for the super rich um, about the issue of nurses striking. Let's go. So let's go back to that story. The health secretary has held constructive talks with the nursing unions. He attempts to avert a devastating wave of winter strikes. Steve Barkley met with Pat Cullen, the head of the Royal College of Nursing, yesterday. The union is demanding a 17.6% pay rise to call off the walkouts. Meanwhile, the biggest health union is beginning to ballot its members in England, Wales and Northern Ireland on strike action. Unison is asking 350,000 NHS staff, including porters, nurses, paramedics and cleaners, to vote in favour of walking out in a dispute over pay. Claire Williams is National Secretary for Unison. Um, afternoon to you, Claire. Just give us a bit of background on this. Is it broadly the same contention as your colleagues in uh, the Royal College of Nursing are having? Same deal, same demand? Yeah, afternoon. Um, yeah, so Uni Unison is very clear that the pay that NHS staff have been given, which was £1,400, which equates to approximately 72 pence an hour, is just nowhere near uh, enough. You know, that's been swallowed up by inflation, the cost of living crisis. What Unison is asking for... Mushroom Mandy, thank you for the follow on Twitch. Welcome to the Justice Stream. Hope you're doing well. Is for the government to come to the table so we can sit down, Unison and other health unions, and have some proper discussions about a much more reasonable uh, pay offer. And, you know, Unison's position is we want to have discussions that are much more looking at a pay offer that is in line with that cost of living uh, crisis. So that would take you above 10%. That's a massive pay rise, surely, Claire? Well, I've not put an absolute figure on it because I think that's for the negotiators to do with government. But what we're very... It's also worth rec also worth noting that obviously they've had pay frozen for quite a while, right? Like they were, they've not been given proper pay rises for a very long time. So it's not only going to beat the cost of living crisis that we have now, it's also going to match what was happening with inflation previously too clear about is that 72 pence an hour is completely unacceptable. Uh, NHS staff are leaving at an alarming rate. There is an acute uh, retention and recruitment crisis. Uh, there are over 135,000 vacancies and key to starting to invest in the NHS and to retain and recruit staff is for the government to come and talk to us about, uh, you know, uh, uh, addressing the pay issues. Look, we've got a significant number of NHS employers are now setting up food banks uh, for their for NHS staff. Things cannot go on as they are. Um, you know, dedicated health staff don't want to have to go on strike, but really feel they've been left with no option because there is a pay issue 
and there's an acute staffing shortage. There is. I, I mean, it's, it's going to be tricky, isn't it? Because the government would have to find this money from somewhere, presumably. That's taxpayers' money. That's taxpayers... They have the money. They're spending more money recruiting agency nurses than giving people a pay rise, keeping people in the industry and attracting people to join. They are paying over the odds currently for agency nurses to be able to fill the gaps in the nursing, in the nursing shortage. 40,000 is the nursing shortage we have at the moment. 40,000 nurses across the UK and other nursing staff that need to, be, need to find replacements for these people. There is budget allocated for this stuff already. Uh, and they're not going to. And, and whilst they're currently filling gaps with agency work, not only are they paying the wages, they're then also paying the agency fees on top. This could just be paid to nurses as, as in the form of an increase in their actual wage packet. Who are perhaps not even enjoying the, uh, the, the 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 possibility of a pay rise themselves? We're in a cost of living crisis, Claire. How could anyone, any whether it's yours or any other organisation, justify such heady demands of you know a minimum of ten percent in, in case of the nurses, seventeen point six percent? Well, you, what Unison is asking for is negotiation. And also, like, and she's obviously right. They are asking specifically for negotiations. And I don't. I work in sales, right? You don't go in with your final offer. You start high and work down. I don't know why that people aren't just taking this, taking it as read at this point, right? To be fair, the nurses have like 60% public support based, right? But like, come on. Even someone, even a cynical talk TV host like Ian Collins must know that even if they go in with 17%, they're probably, they're not expecting to get 17%. And they'll probably get bargained down to 10%. That's probably what I would expect, which is currently the rate of inflation as per CPI, right? That that would be a reasonable pay increase. I think that they deserve that. But say they're coming in expecting 17%, I, you, you, re, you really are just kind of begging the question at this point. Uh, well, that's because, going to be the ballpark no, you're in, isn't well, no, it? What I'm saying is that Unison's position is that we want a pay rise that's much more in line with the cost of living crisis. The reality is that year on year, NHS staff's wages have not been keeping up with inflation. And what we see is NHS staff actually relying now on food banks that are being set up by their employer. I mean, that's, I that's, it, that's, not, it, that's not a, 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 a typical scenario, is it, that people uh, are well, using food. I don't care whether it's typical or not. If it's happening, it's scandalous. Right? There's always this kind of, well, it's not, it's not as bad as it could be. I'm sorry, right? The fact that it's happening at all is completely unacceptable and it shouldn't be acceptable for anybody with even like a, like a modicum of a sense of consciousness. Come on, Ian. This is super fucking easy, right? Any nurses using food banks is horrendous. Uh, and I think there's this... There's this perception that everything, like you say, oh, on average, nurses are getting the thirty-one thousand pound a year. Is if that's literally every nurse? But well, actually, that's kind of band five as far as pay brackets are concerned. Nursing assistants, which are also balloting to strike as well, as they're part of that same kind of group, we do at least make nurses' jobs easier by being able to assist them in the clerical processes that take up the vast majority of what nurses have to go through during the day. These people like fucking twenty thousand pound a year. They earn less than I do. Food banks. It is a typical scenario. Some and people also, might be using food banks, but essentially, no, also, you are you are kind of making that bit up, Claire, aren't you? I, I don't make it. No, it's not fucking. You know, making that up. But he's not easy. He is literally saying. He's literally saying, well, if it's not everybody, then it's basically false. What? That's just a non. If I said it could literally be one nurse and what you or two nurses, I guess, because you said a plural, and that she could technically not be making anything up, right? But that isn't the case. There's huge swathes of them using them anything up it's it's well, abso I think absolute... you just did well i didn't make it up because actually nhs employers themselves are publishing uh, that they many of their hospitals are having to set up food banks the second point i'd make in relation to your comment about some people not getting pay rises part of what the staffing shortage is that nhs staff are leaving the nhs to go and work in other sectors such as supermarkets hospitality where those people have been given in some cases second and third pay rises is because of inflation so it is not correct for you to say that uh, nhs staff are asking for something that other people have no i'm, I'm not suggesting listen the I, I... evidence is that nhs pay is not kept in line with inflation and, and neither the government has i don't know anybody who's i don't know anybody who's currently got a 10 percent pay rise 
How about fucking bin workers got a twelve percent pay rise? British Airways employees got a got a got an eleven percent pay rise. There are plenty of people who have been getting pay rises. You know what links all of these groups of people getting pay rises, Ian? They're all in fucking unions. Again, just what we saw with the Julia Hartley Brewer interview, where they were explicitly trying to pit different groups of workers against each other based on whether or not they're in a union, saying, well, if you're in a union, that's bad because that means compared to me, you're getting a pay rise that I'm not. Which is trying to play into people's like kind of kind of an innate kind of sense of jealousy rather than realizing, well, maybe hang on a minute, maybe if these people who've joined a union are getting a bunch of pay rises, maybe I would also personally be able to get pay rises if I maybe joined a union. That's crazy. Rather than attacking, you know, the boss, the person who's not giving you the pay rise that you should be getting, the person who you should be blaming, you not getting the pay rise you that you should be get you should be getting. You're like well, I'm better than you somehow because I'm content with being underpaid. What a ridiculous position for these for, to, for Ian Collins to try and be projecting onto his own viewers. Literally just say, like, you, you're shit, but at least you admit that you're in a shit position and you're happy with being underpaid and being immiserated during cost of living crisis. You should be attacking people who are similar to your level, but you have the gumption to go out and try and negotiate to be able to get a better salary, rather than blaming, I don't know, the people who decide the fucking salaries in the first place. So, well, there are people getting uh, more than 72 pence an hour outside of the NHS, but the key issue is that there is an acute staffing shortage within the NHS, and key to resolving that, so stopping experienced staff leaving and being able to recruit new staff, we have to sit down with the government and they need to acknowledge and address the staffing issues, and key to that is the level of pay. Isn't there a point, though, where a, a kind of a realistic assessment has to be done and even if somebody sympathizes you know if you said to me do i want to pay a porter or a cleaner or a paramedic more money the answer is obviously yes that would be great and i'd like to pay lots of people more money there is an irredeemable reality though claire and that is that we're in a cost of living crisis the government is pretty much broke right now there isn't a lot of the government is not broke the government cannot go broke the government creates its own money and is in charge of the central bank that's not a thing that can happen, Ian. That is a literal impossibility. The government could default on its sovereign debt, but we have a strong currency, right? We, the quote-unquote £50 billion black hole doesn't have to be paid back for 18 years, right? There's plenty of time to rebuild the economy between now and then. And you're not going to be able to rebuild the economy if the people at the bottom of that economy who have the money to be able to consume cannot consume because their pay packet barely pays for their rent and bills, so much so that they're having to use food banks, right? And if you really, really want to be able to fill that quote-unquote black hole or be able to create the wealth to be able to redistribute in the form of public sector pay increases, you could tax the fucking rich, right? We could do windfall taxes on the energy companies. We could instrument wealth taxes, for example. These are all things that we can do. But Ian is very, it's very sneaky. He's not mentioning any of this stuff and trying to uh, go by the implicit presumption that there is a black hole in the finances and we have, there's no money left for the country, despite the fact that the government creates all the money because it's the it controls the central bank, right? It's very, it's very int interesting that he's trying to make that implicit assumption when it is something that he can use to be able to say, well, well, I guess you're just going to have to be, I guess you just have to you use food banks and be miserable. God, it's so disingenuous and just fundamentally untrue money around it's a great opportunity for unions to all ride on the coattails of each other and make this more about an anti-tory thing than it is about a pro-worker thing i mean those are those are one and the same you cannot be anti-tory without being pro worker so you can't be pro-worker without being anti-tory those two are completely inseparable because the tories do the opposite of fighting for workers they are the they are the <laughs> The electoral wing of the bourgeois. They are the electoral wing of the employers. Like, there is... The, the only way that you're going to get a good deal for workers overall is if you remove the Tories from government, right? But whilst the Tories are in government, unions are going to have to do what they can do to try and ensure that they get the best deal for their members. That's the function of a fucking union. Just going to wait here for the pro work stories to show up. Yeah, exactly. What a nonsense point to make. And yeah, unless we get proper uh, government, you know, unless we get proper you know, you know, political policy that benefits working people, 
damn right they should be anti-Tory and damn right they should take, you know, coordinate industrial action to force the government's hand. Again, that's what unions are for, fighting for their members. If the interest of their members is excising the Tories from government and forcing them to in a political position to benefit them, then that's what the union's going to do. That's li the literal function of the union in the first place. A lot of these people moan at footballers getting massive contracts and say the nurses and doctors should get that money. And when they do ask for a pay rise, everybody shits themselves. All they want to do is play them, pay them in claps. True. And they want to performatively get angry about footballers because they see them as somehow being, you know, uh, not useful for the economy. Suddenly, right, suddenly when it's a position like that, they're happy to, to understand the difference between societally useful labour and society... And, labour that is not societally useful, right? They're very clear to make that distinction when it comes to footballers or whatever, right? But it actually comes down to the brass tacks. When they realise the their performative virtue signalling about you know, paying the doctors instead or whatever, fundamentally is against their position as being the as, as being agitators for right wing government, suddenly that all goes away. Or suddenly that all goes away. Because we could just tax footballers. We could just tax a, just tax a bunch of footballers. You know, you know who'd really be hit by fifty p in the pound tax above a two hundred fifty thousand pound a year? Footballers would be. They would. They would get really hit by that tax, wouldn't they? That's just, why? Why are you saying that we should raise tax on the rich? No justice. Oh, crazy that shit. We could. That's definitely a thing that we could do. And people like taxes on the rich. Remember what happened the last time someone tried to cut taxes for the rich. A, the economy imploded, and B, people were really angry. <laughs> so I think there's uh, the irredeemable facts are that um, NHS staff didn't crash the economy. Um, I think NHS staff went to work during the pandemic. Uh, the government has underfunded the NHS. There's over 7 million people currently on waiting lists. The, the NHS is in a dire strait. The government needs a strategy and key to that is investment in the NHS and investment in the staff who that deliver sounds those like services. An anti, that sounds like an anti-Tory thing though, talking about crashing the... Yes, based. Based on anti-Tory pill. Let's go. The economy. I mean, there's a global issue going on here. Well, Unison are affiliated to the Labour Party as well. What did you expect them to do? They're literally affiliated to the political party that is poised to be able to unseat the Tories in the case of a general election. What the fuck else did you expect them to do, Ian, you, you moron? Well, uh, the reality is that it was the, the previous Prime Minister and Chancellor that took financial decisions that have created an acute economic crisis at the minute. The longer term issue is that year on year, uh, the NHS is underfunded. We've got an acute staffing shortage, as I've said. We're losing uh, experienced staff at an alarming rate. The ability to recruit staff has dropped and we need a government to come and talk to Unison and other health unions and organizations about how we invest in the nhs and how we tackle these issues and that is their responsibility this will cost billions where are they going to get it from the rich well well, the reality is, um, also, uh, you know, you said, well, it's taxpayers' money. Public service workers uh, do pay taxes through their wages. Uh, there's also quite a lot of evidence that if you invest in public services, you actually help to grow local and regional economies. So I don't think it's correct to sort of pose, well, if we invest in public services, uh, how are we going to pay for other well, things? It's, a, it's the same argument for, for new welfare payments, right? In that if you really want to benefit the economy, quote unquote, giving benefits you new know, people who run benefits more money to go out and spend in the economy will create a more active economy like that's one of those arguments right there are people who say oh okay well there were inflationary concerns with increasing demand that might be a reasonable statement if we were in a period of demand driven inflation which we clearly are not. We're clearly in a supply-driven inflationary period by the increase in gas prices which has had knock-on effects throughout the entire economy and People have barely enough money to spend regardless. GDP is down. Like, not only are we facing inflation, we're also facing a recession. Giving, having more money in the pockets of people who spend the money rather than investing the money is actually better for the economy right now. 
things. The two things are connected. But the reality that we're talking about here is NHS staff are using food banks, employers are setting up food banks, and their pay so, has, some... is not adequate enough Claire, for them Claire, to be I able mean, to pay their wages. Listen, nobody suggested there aren't some people who happen to work for the NHS that have used a food bank. But the idea that this is industrial scale, that the average paramedic or nurse is using a food bank is simply not true. You're using that as a device, aren't you, to almost not, why, why, con convince, to to convince people that this situation is more acute than perhaps it actually is. So, well, I don't need to use anything as a device because what I'm giving you are facts and evidence. When you've got NHS providers and employers themselves saying that, when you've got NHS employers... Yeah, why would they be setting up the food banks in the NHS trusts and hospitals themselves? It's crazy shit. This is like, what? It's hardly an, an, like, an endemic problem if it's if it's not such if it's if it wasn't a wild scale problem why are the nhs hospitals doing it themselves why have they felt the need to if it wasn't such a huge problem the, the evidence doesn't track in oh no it's not a low longer problem that it's happening at all now he's worried that it's not happening enough got a call yeah exactly and providers themselves saying they are really exceptionally concerned about the acute staffing crisis in the nhs i think it is I think I think uh, Claire is really missing the trick here, talking about the issue that we have with regards to uh, agency work here. In fact, there was a BBC article about it that was really fucking disingenuous, where the headline was like having to pay two and a half thousand pound for nurse fees um, to cover to cover staffing shortages, without explicitly pointing out in the title that the inflation of the money that they're having to pay for these staffing shifts is because that they refuse to put nurses pay up so can't recruit, so have to then pay agencies to bring in agency workers at inflated rates because of the fees they have to pay on top. Like, we could fill these gaps by getting in newly trained nurses, whether it be in the UK or, for example, overseas, cough, overseas, sorry, cough, Keir Starmer, cough, right? We could do, do that by increasing the pay and making these positions, A, more attractive people to join in the first place, and B, stop people leaving the profession, profession which people are continuing to do because they're not getting paid enough. It's really not that difficult, right? And if there's one thing that gets economic returns, it's making sure that your population is well enough to participate in the economy, which we're just not getting at the moment because healthcare has been cut to the absolute bone is, uh, you know, incumbent on the government to be responsible to listen to that and to come and meet with Unison and other health unions to look at how we can resolve these issues. So what's the deal now then? When when or if would strike action happen? What's the assessment So there? Unison's ballot uh, is underway at the minute, as you've said. Uh, 350,000 NHS staff are currently being balloted by Unison. Our ballot ends on the 25th of November. At that point, we will know the result. I think the important thing to, to reiterate again is NHS staff are really dedicated. They don't want to have to go on strike, but the situation's so dire, they feel they've had no alternative but to be balloted. A strike isn't inevitable. The government needs to come and sit at the table with Unison and other health unions and look at negotiating a way through this. A crisis can be averted, but actually the responsibility for that sits with the government wanting to engage and come and discuss and negotiate Claire. very very based and true williams thank you national secretary of unison it's a very odd title for ian collins dispatches union boss when he made a bunch of nonsense points that she easily rebutted without me having to commentate on much right obviously i made some additional points here but like she was pretty good at being able to tell you show him tell him what for and rebut his points in a pretty erudite manner. And he was basically just there and lying. Very, very strange. As somebody who works for one of the major supermarket chains here in the UK, I find it almost impossible to believe that nurses and NHS staff are leaving to come and work in a supermarket. So far this year, I've only had a 25 pence per hour pay rise across the board, and that's our lot. The poor buggers on the shop floor and checkouts are on a measly £10 an hour. Bless them. That's the reality. I don't know what clown world these people live in, but that's not the real world. £10 an hour is what? Band A nursing uh, nursing assistant staff are on in the nhs that is literally an nhs staff uh, nhs staff salary and there you're probably only working uh, in a capacity which isn't going to destroy someone's mental health in the same way working in the nursing profession might right that is similar to a band a pay packet 
I earn far less than NHS nurse. And I don't need to use a food bank, as I'm sure many others say the same. The NHS is a mess that needs reform, but the unions don't care about that. One of the reforms is ensuring that we have the staff available to be able to service the needs of patients, which we're not getting because we're losing staff because they don't get paid enough to keep them in the business. 1400 a year is only £30 a week for 52 weeks, which, which they certainly don't work. They work really long hours. I don't know what the fuck this person's talking about. What about all the people in the service industries that kept us fed during the pandemic for way less than nurses earn? If you, yes, yeah, good. Yeah, they should also go on strike. They should also go out and join a union and ballot for strike action and increase their wages too. Yes, that's a thing that they should do. If you're on 30k per annum and need a food bank, which isn't what the nurses who are on using the food bank is doing, that's an average pay. I said band A and band B are like 20, 20k and 22k, which is definitely within food bank range, right? Depending on how many family you have to feed on or how many incomes. They need to look at your expenditure. Most people in the UK earn less than a newly qualified nurse. That, that's not true. That is literally fundamentally not true. The median income in this country is about £28,000. And as I said, you know, the lowest pay grades for nurses come in at lower than that, especially for newly qualified ones. And they don't need food banks. This is a fabricated load of old tosh. Well, the fact that you've just lied in your comment there, Mr. Chris Taylor, shows you I'm going to fucking clue about what you're talking about. I just worked out £30 a week before I saw your comment. That kind of money is more than a lot of people in the private sector were given if they got anything at all. Typical public sector whinging. They need a reality check. How about those people in the private sector join a fucking union? Cra crazy fact. Cra crazy statement, I, I know, right? The crazy thing for me to say that maybe somebody who's moaning about public sector pay increases because of union action, who isn't a member of a union in their private sector job, could do the same if they went and join a union, if they want to join a fucking union. I'm using for someone to say that the NHS has, has, has had billions thrown at it, when it's had consistently un underfunded as a percentage of GDP for the last 10 years. But literally, you can see the graph, it just goes up and up, and then it starts going down. As soon as the Tories get into power, NHS spending as a percentage of GDP continually goes down. Again, this person here just, this is what this dangerous rhetoric and these lies from people like Talk TV do. They completely misinform people. So you'll, by lying with facts a lot of the time, right? They'll make, they'll make statements in, that are completely isolated from each other, but word it in such a way that people think that they're linked. So for example, this person here saying over 30K and having to use food banks, I doubt it. When... 30k is the average wage, not the wage everybody pays, right? And there are plenty of people, and that's, 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 that's 30k is around about band four, band five. The, the people who are using food banks are the people who are, work, are going under this, right? And literally, like random state, like random kind of head cannons going, they must have a drink slash drug issue or living way above their means. What if they're a single family, a family trying to live off a single income, right? Like, I earn £21,000 a year or something, and I survive because I have to pay for myself. If I had kids, there's no way I'd be able to survive on this income whatsoever. These people, these people just must, must all either be middle class or just have no kids at all. Like, they literally cannot possibly put themselves in the situation of another person where they are just in a situation where, you know, that they just can't pay the bills. This person just literally making shit up to justify the fact that he doesn't want you nurses to go on strike because he wants them to not have enough have enough, enough enough money. Show me a nurse using a food bank and I'll show you a nurse that is irresponsible with money because they refuse to believe that the cost of living crisis can get to the point where someone might be forced to use a food bank. They have to. Again, this is, this is fucking neoliberal conditioning right at the heart of it. With this kind of just world fallacy shit, where they're just like, if things are going wrong for them, it must be their own fault. There can't be any systemic issue at play whatsoever. If you're in the situation, only you can possibly be to blame for that. And then, but then saying, well, Hammett, if they if they're in that situation, they're taking their own personal, they're using their own personal position to try and you know, bargain, collect a bargain for higher wages, so they can't win in this person's mind. Or they're stuck in the suffering is good Protestant work ethic shit. That's also true, JDM, and that's also some real fucking brain poison.
They should all be ashamed of themselves. Everybody else is having to cope. You know who isn't having to cope? Other people who've joined the union. <laughs> I, I, I keep having to say the same shit, but it's just like, it applies to all of these people who are just like, well, I didn't get a pay rise. Are you a member of a union? No. Well, there you go. You ha only have yourself to blame. You only have yourself to blame at this point. More than half NHS trusts in England didn't have a majority turnout backing strike action. Therefore, less than 50% of nurses back strike action. If RCN, as a particular group, they get their 50% to back strike action, right? Then they can go on strike. That's, what, that's how the rules work. The NHS is a monster. It's not for the purpose. It pays the nurses a low wage and a pen push that is on more than the PM. That's where the trouble is. They waste billions every year. I mean... Take this logic, right? Take this logic where you have someone at the top of the company who gets paid huge amounts of money and then people at the bottom of the company who don't get paid enough to live on. Take that situation, right? Now apply that to literally every company in the country and you've solved the cost of living crisis, right? You take a look at it and you go, well, hang on a minute, the, the CEO of fucking Centrica is walking away with millions of pounds every year whilst people on the bottom rung of the ladder are having to pay out of their, out of their ass for their um electricity bills <laughs> and then maybe 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 you, you can put these put two and two together right this dynamic that you've just talked about here mr ian cooper this dynamic can be spread across the rest of the bloody country in every single sector it's crazy how that you only talk about this incredibly diff this very specific issue when there's literally the same issue that we're having everywhere else, where the share in the private sector, where shareholders and your know, board and people on the board of directors, they all take precedent when it comes to money. Yet people at the bottom want to pay rise. Oh, I'm sorry, we can't afford that for the budget. You just paid out dividends. You know, well, you know, shareholders want what shareholders want, right? That's why you have to ballot for industrial action. You have to threaten the shareholders with the, with the collapse of the entire company to be able to budge on the position that they have to for where their money is going. Because the shareholder value will drop to zero if the company goes bust, right? So if you say, well, company goes bust, or, or you give us a pay rise and then you minimise your share dividend, and like, well, I guess we might have to do that, which you won't get. You won't get that unless you unless you collectively bargain, because there's no reason for the shareholder to do so, or for the board of, or we guess, or the board of directors to do so on behalf of the shareholders. And these neoliberals are the ones who say socialism is just living in a cabin, have to grow your own food. When someone is using a food bank, they say stop paying for Netflix. It's a sea of contradictions. Exactly, Samson Duty. It's, it is a sea of contradictions. Well, it's, it's amusing this Ian Cooper person said that it pays nurses a low wage. Like, amusing, you th I'm assuming this kind of this, this, this thread of comments is just people saying, oh, they don't pay them a low wage, blah, 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 blah. I, I'm, on my, I'm on my banker salary and I don't really care. I know someone said NHS was fine under Labour, so now people are getting mad about the red team. Because these people, these people, right? These, these fucking, this comment section full of people, and Mr. Ian Collins as well, right? They have the same, they have the same brain poison as the Liberals on the other side do, where it's just blue team versus red team. And you can't, um, you can say, for example, PFIs were bad in the NHS. The backdoor privatisation that happened under Blair was bad, right? But at least the NHS outcomes were better at the time. And you can make that point, and the people and the, the people who support the blue team will go, oh, I can't believe you didn't support the blue team. I'm like, tough shit. I'm taking my positions off the back of policy and the back of utility. I don't bind this fucking team sports shit that you're going on about. As someone who despises Blair, despises what Blair did to the country and the and what he did to the Labour Party, like I'm at least, you know, have enough of of my own axioms grounded to be able to look at what Tony Blair did as Prime Minister and go, well, these are the good bits. These bits were good. NHS did, did good, but these people are so brain poisoned by the team sports mentality. But, you know, but blue team is always good, red team is always bad, so we have to find a reason why Blair was bad for the NHS when statistically, when you look at patient outcomes, he was really, really good. I mean, leftoids will do this as well. I'm sure there'll be leftoids in the comment section going, I can't believe you defended neoliberal Blair. And I'm like, yeah, I will attack him for the things he did bad uh, and not for the things that he did that are good. Like, I'm sorry. I mean, I even called him out for PFIs in this very statement. So I don't know what else you want me to do. But yeah, uh, this is yet another, um, yet another talk TV host 
who doesn't understand what the fuck unions do uh, and what collective bargaining is for or how the economy works because these people are idiots and they're propagandists and the only reason that they're in the position that they're in is because they're happy to be bootlicking sycophants for the bourgeois and that's why ian collins has the job that he does because rupert murdoch pays his bills so yeah manufactured consent wonderful uh, also please like and subscribe and also drop a comment calling me a soy beta lib cuck in 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 the comments so it feeds the algorithm and click the bell it'll notify you when i go live in the future too and if you look at my member on youtube it's 99p and you get some of the emotes from Twitch. Although Twitch users who are watching right now can subscribe with 399 and get all of the emotes. It's just more expensive. Uh, and I'll uh, see you on the next segment.